there is a story, an article basically in truthdig.com, and it's written by uh, Amelia Pang. Uh, the title of it is Native American Rape Survivors Tell How Deck is Stacked Against Them, and it's a pretty, um, I just started reading some of Amelia Pang's uh, work, and she goes into sort of uh, long form narrative type uh, journalism. It's, it's pretty uh, engaging. Um, what this goes into is a, a phenomenon that I'm just learning about. Um, that, first of all, the um, number of, of rapes that happen is, is far more for Native American women and, and even Native American men. So basically, uh, according to the Department of Justice, uh, estimates that one in three Native American women reports having been sexually assaulted uh, during her lifetime, they are 2.5 times more likely to experience sexual violence than women of any other ethnicity in the United States. Also, if you see the movie Wind River, um, <clears throat> which I highly recommend, also talks about there's a lot of um, unsolved deaths and missing women from reservations. And this article focuses on sexual assault, but if you see when this movie Wind River and then you read this article, you see that the what's causing both of these things is the same thing. There's there's several reasons and this article goes into it is first of all there's not a lot you know like a, a res, some of these reservations are huge and they'll have like 15 cops to cover some giant area, 20 cops. Uh, and then as this article goes into, most of the time, the majority of the cops are white. And then there's even another thing, a certain time, um, they're not allowed to, pro I'll go into the specifics because I'm just trying to understand it. They're not allowed to prosecute if the person, one of the suspects is not on the reservation and that law is, is being changed. Um, so, um, I'll go into some more of the statistics here, um, and here, where there's a disparity between how it's reported and then like the local sheriff's departments, how they're just sort of, ah, oh, these women, they all, they're drunk Indians. They get, you know, they, they interview <laughs> this, this, this article is, is, it's, it's very well written. It's, um, pretty frustrating, pretty maddening, because one of the cops they interview is like, oh, a lot of these Native American women, they cheat on their boyfriends, and then they they claim, you know, that they were um, raped just so they don't want to get caught. And it's like, okay, I, I'm sure that that's happened. I'm sure there's women that have done that. But then what they talk to is like the rape counselors who are like, when the women give very detailed accounts of what happened and then submit to a rape kit, it's very unlikely that they're lying. Women, when women lie about it, they're, they're like, oh, I don't want to do a rape kit. They're usually reluctant to get a rape kit because it'll show that they weren't. See? So it contra the, 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 the sort of disdain and then the, the, the local cops just sort of, oh, there's Native American, they're drunk Indian women, you know, and it's, it's really, it's fucking offensive as shit. Um, so the U.S. Census Bureau estimates that the the White Earth Indian Reservation, that's where this uh, is fo this story is focused that Amelia Pang talks about, has a population of 5,044. 24 rapes were recorded in 2015 from the region, 13 in 2014, 12 in 2013. Um, the Monoman County Sheriff's Office recorded no rapes in 2010 and 2013, even though the county consists entirely of the White Earth Indian Reservation. See, there's the, there's the problem. Where it's reported and then the Sheriff's Department doesn't, doesn't do it. Of the 28 officers in the White Earth Tribal Police Department, only four are Native American. Most are white, predominantly white police officers from three neighboring counties. White Earth Indian Reservation sprawls over 1,300 square miles. 1,300 square miles, 28 cops. Only four of them are Native American. Um, so l let me go into some more statistics here. Um, 
the vast majority of state and tribal courts do not have the legal authority to prosecute serious crimes that occur on a reservation. Most criminal cases that occur on a reservation must go to the feds. Yet the feds have a staggering backlog of cases. For example, they declined to prosecute more than 65% of major crime cases that originated from reservations in 2006, perpetuating an environment in which rapists and domestic violence abusers can act with impunity. So once again, the federal government is I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't even believe it. It's 2017 and the, and the United States federal government is still um, not giving a shit about Native Americans, specifically Native American women. And this is a similar, when, we, when I talked about, I did a story with regard to the, um, with ICE and immigration and the city of Los Angeles were, that, Domestic abuse and sexual assaults were 25% um, less were being reported. And the cops are like, it's not like less are happening. People are just not reporting them because they're afraid they're going to get deported. So in this instance, people are just committing crimes because they know ah, there's no chance of me getting prosecuted. So this is, this is just... Um, <laughs> So the particular, the particularity, the case, uh, um, this is particularly the case if the perpetrator is not a Native American. Let me, I, want to, I want to make this very clear. Most tribal police departments lack the legal authority to arrest a non-Native American who commits a crime on the reservation. So the local police, can, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine can you imagine in any other community where this is the case? Can you imagine if a cop in a predominantly white, wealthy suburb and a non-white committed a crime in that suburb and the cops in that suburb weren't allowed to prosecute the non-white person? Can you fucking imagine? Can you even picture that in this country? No, you can't because it would never be allowed to happen. And yet we're doing it to Native Americans. This is not the case, though, with the White Earth Indian Reservation. It received federal jurisdiction in 2013, which means its tribal police can arrest anyone. That's good. It also allows the three surrounding state courts to prosecute most criminal cases that originate from the reservations. Well, that's good because then you have less of a backlog if you can get it in some court somewhere. Of the nation's 326 Indian reservations, White Earth is the first of three to receive concurrent jurisdiction. Three out of 326. So that means there's 323 Indian reservations where the local cops cannot arrest a non-native on who committed a crime on the reservation. They got to get outside authority. That seems fair. But even with that, rapes are still very rampant on the white earth. Um, and they're talking about, I mean, the story, this, the interviews and the stories that, that this journalist gets is just, it's, it's brutal. It's brutal. And there's even young men that have been sexually assaulted and the cops just, ah, don't, you know, don't want to do about it. So let me read you. And, 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 and this one cop's like, well, we had to arrest this guy and the woman's making a false case. And if it's a, you know, she, he, I think she's making a false case. And if it is, it ruins this guy's life. Now that, that alone, that on its own is a, is a real thing, right? If a woman just falsely accuses a guy of that, that's a pretty horrible thing for a guy to be accused of, and it could ruin a guy's life if he didn't do it. But if there's all this evidence stacking up against it and she's like, gives a very detailed account of this and then has a rape kit done on her, it's just, it's just fucking awful that these cops are just so dismissive of this. Um, And Karen uh, Kellerhus, a sexual assault nurse examiner who has worked in emergency rooms on White Earth Reservation for 30 years, said this one cop, Seeger, typifies the attitudes of both tribal and non-tribal police officers who often question the credibility of Native American women.
Yeah, and this what this woman who's worked in the ERs. And she like calls this cop back and asks the officer to, to take a statement from the victim. And the cop says, oh, did she put on a show for you? I don't believe her. She wasn't even emotional with me. Are you sure she was raped? Yeah. She's in shock and she didn't trust you. Cop, got man, guy with a gun. She was just assaulted by a man. Why would she open up to you? Jackass. Fucking idiots. So... Uh, this is, a, I, I want to bring light to this. I appreciate Truth Dig for covering this, and I appreciate um, um, Amelia Pang for uh, talking about this. Um, and um, I, I think this, uh, this subject needs to be talked about more, a lot more. Um, sexual assault is awful when it happens to anyone at any time. And it's even worse if then there's no, pro if you're not even, no one is prosecuted and you're made to believe, oh, you're lying, she's just a drunk or she's a slut or whatever. It compounds it and makes it even worse. And um, the fact that the Native American women are being treated even worse is just appalling to me. And so I wanted to make this well known to people. So. I know it's not a it's, it's it's a not a easy or comfortable subject to talk about, but that's all the more reason to talk about it, you know. So, one in four women are sexually assaulted. <laughs> one in three, if you're Native American, one in six men have been sexually assaulted. I don't know if you know that. So, um, I thank you guys for watching this and uh, I appreciate your comments below and you know one of the things I like doing with this show is I want to have some conversations about some stuff even if it's really uncomfortable or painful or uneasy and and uh, uh, these are conversations that we need to we need to be had and it also shows me that we need real police reform again you know not just with brutality but like The, the, like no sensitivity training just ah oh, that girl's lying she put on a good show like fuck you man it's shit like this it makes me embarrassed to be a man it really does so thanks for watching and um Thanks for paying attention, you guys. Thanks for wanting to be informed. Thanks for coming here because you want to hear about this sort of stuff. You want to know what's going on. You want to make a difference. You want to get involved. You know, contact your local representatives. If you have Indian reservations in your state or your area, let them know. But put, put some pressure on some people. You know, some female representatives, you know, some female senators need to know about this, especially in states where that have reservations. And they need to they need to get involved and get these it's it's brutal it's brutal and watch the movie wind river it's a very good movie and it covers this type of subject and i'm going to be covering more stuff from amelia pang i believe because i like her writing a lot um so thanks for watching the show you guys thanks for giving a shit.